Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin in Imo states where political, the political maxim, no permanent friend, no enemies, is unfolding. The former governor of the states, Senator Rochas Okorocha, mm -hmm. has endorsed Governor Hope Uzodima for a second term in office ahead of the November 11 governorship election in the southeast states. Senator Okorocha's endorsement came after a meeting with Vice President Kashim Shetima mm -hmm. and the National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Abdullah Ganduji. Jili, did you see this coming? No, certainly not. Um, I, you know, in politics, um, there are always surprises, and uh, you should always be on the lookout for surprises. But I didn't uh, know that a day like this will come uh, when Okorocha and um, will come together again, but party leaders are very powerful. They are very influential, and since so Okorocha um, decided to remain in the party uh, to a very large extent, is subject to the direction of party leaders. So it was the wish of the party leaders to have everyone singing from the same hymn book ahead of the November election, and um, Okorocha being a former governor and an influential politician in the state, um, was someone that they felt they needed to reach out to. Hope could not have done it alone, because the governor would most, I mean, the former governor would most likely have ignored him. But um, higher forces, as President Kashim Shetima, President Tinubu, um, National Chairman uh, um, Abdullah Umar Ganduje uh, stepped in and brought the two gladiators together, and significantly two, Okorocha's in-law, uh, Uche Nwosu uh, Ogumba, has also endorsed um, Opu Zodima for the second term. Certainly the election in Nemo will be very keen, because the uh, Labour Party is strong in the state. The PDP is not resting on its laurels. So APC leaders need all the asana that they can summon to win the election. And uh, you can see that this move is meant to show that, look, we are not taking chances. We are trying to plug all loopholes to ensure that we retain the state. Uh, so. Um, I I hope that this um, endorsement is real and um, will endure until the, at least the time of the election. Wale, when you look at the <coughs> results for the 2023 election, do we know that, look, um, Opo Zodima, if he doesn't get everybody behind him, he might be swimming against the tide. The tide in the southeast now is basically anti-APC. Mm. But he was able to get one or two things during the election. But then, that is not an APC state. That's why the fact that Okorocha ruled that place under APC for eight years. Mm. But you can't say, look, that everything favors APC. President Tinobu had, in all the region in the southeast, 1.5% of the votes. Mm. So this move is kind of strategic. I think, first of all, <clears throat> what happened is a strong indication that no matter how deep a particular problem is within the party, uh, it can still be resolved. Um, there is no conflict in any political party that if you have responsive leadership, that they cannot resolve. And one thing that we can see is that the party chairman is not an extremist. He didn't take a no going back position to say, look, uh, Okocha, we don't want to again or something like that. So I think uh, it shows that it's a lesson that if there is crisis within a party, the leadership should show interest. It should not just be left for you know, the local politicians alone. I think the Imo state government has an advantage. It's an off-season election. So the mood that we saw 
in uh, March 2003, but not necessarily be the same. Because at that time it was like Labour Party, you know, and all that, but you, you may not see the same same police time around, you know, in the state. More importantly, Okorocha, which is one of the major uh, dissidents, let me use that one, you know, has now reconciled with uh, Opus Odima. And if you also look at the House of Assembly, I think the APC still has a sizable portion of, I think, about 25 out of 27. You know, the of Assembly. Yes. So I believe the election is going to be tough, but I think the APC is going to the election um, more prepared, more formidable than it used to be. And I think uh, it will be going to that election from position of strength. So it really is going to be very tough about it, but I, don't, I think it's going to be less difficult compared with when, you know, Uzo Dima and uh, Okorocha are working, you know, across each other. Looking at the man of oh, Uzodi Majide, he seems to be a tough character. Somebody that does not give up on, uh, easily mm. in terms of performance, in terms of what he has been doing. He has been consistent. And even at the national politics for, for the APC, he has proved himself to be somebody that is a very valuable player. Yes, um, he's, he has shown that he is not a pushover. Uh, I, there is an extent to which I can assess his value, but he has shown that he's not a pushover and is active in the politics of um, uh, of the APC at the national level. No doubt about that. He finds uh, he enjoyed a good working relationship with the president. I think the president visited him within a short time. Visited the state more than he visited some of his uh, neighbors, some of his colleagues. So he's he has found a way to play the politics, the national politics, the right way. And uh, within the state, too, which is no nonsense in nature, um, he's strong in the area, of, um, the area of security because it's not easy to, to rule that state. Mm. We see what he has invested we have cultists. In, we in, have um, in weapons, in equipment for the armed forces, he has done really very well. Um, uh, this, this is all I can say. I, I hope that he will uh, give supporters every reason to be able to trust him because some of them complain that he doesn't honor his obligation. Um, Maybe he has changed, or maybe they are lying against him. Where I am, I cannot say they are lying against him. I cannot say that if it is true that he has changed, but he has to watch his back. And when he gives, when he promises people that this is what they are going to do in return for giving him support, he should be able to honor his obligation. That's how you know a good politician. All right. According to an African proverb, when people fail to bail the water, when, when it is ankle deep, they will be swept away by its report says more than 1,680 school children have been kidnapped since the 2014, since 2014, abduction of 276 school girls from Chibok in Borno State with fear of attacks stopping many other from ever attending school. The data by a group say Save the Children shows that more than 180 school children were killed and nearly 90 others injured in 70 attacks between April 2014 and December 2022. An estimated 60 school staff were kidnapped and 14 killed while 25 school buildings were destroyed within that period. Wally, this is a very worrisome statistics, especially if you look at the northern part of the country, that the school enrollment uh, statistic is not so encouraging. And if they are faced with this kind of um, situation, this might discourage more parents from sending their children to school. It's a very unfortunate incident. 
you are talking about 1,680 something. That's, that is a lot. Mm. And uh, if you look at these figures coming out from Northwest and North Central, those are the places that are most affected. And uh, I think 70% of attacks, I mean, 70 attacks were listed, you know, in this uh, the period on that review. And I think as we speak now, we still have about 90 Chibok girls, if not more, that are yet they are still in uh, captivity. Some of them, we are not sure, maybe they are alive, alive. maybe they are dead. Uh, some of them, we have even given birth mm. to Majority. the reluctant, uh, I mean, the reluctant family that is not out of your own way. And I think as we speak now, in some northern states, some, there are still so many schools that are closed down, especially in Casina, you know. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a major problem, especially considering the low turnout of school enrollment in the northwest and the north central. So what you are going to see is that a lot of families will not take their children to school again. So that is going to have a lot of impact on the present and future of a lot of people, a lot of families in the north. And we, are find, we see a situation where a lot of them are also moving down south to look for education. But some are already also suffering the impact of trauma. Most students that were rescued are saying that they don't want to go back to school again. Because once they step into that uh, school, the memory flashes back, you know, and then they have the kind of uh, trauma that they can't imagine going back to school again and you can have the second time. So I, I think this is a very worrisome development. And we hope that our schools will be seen as strategic assets that deter, um, <coughs> they deserve special protection so that we will not have this kind of uh, uh, kidnapping of a uh, student any longer. If we kidnap an adult, well, it's, not, it's bad, but it's, it's worse when children who don't even know anything, four years old, five years old, ten years old, and for especially some of them that are, you know, she, um, the, the girl child mm -hmm. that are just married to some irresponsible elements who take them to the bush, mm -hmm. you know, pregnant them, even raise children. Mm -hmm. One child, second child. So what is the future of that kind of family? Mm -hmm. So I, I hope, we, you know, it's a, it's a call up uh, challenge that I hope the new government will be able to rise up to the occasion. Do you think statistics is encouraging at all? It's not. Um, there is a reason bandits go for school children. Is because they know that once they go for school children, it will attract newspaper headlines, big banner headlines and newspapers. It will attract the attention of government. Otherwise, they could just kidnap um, commuters, mm. take them away into the bush in buses and all that. But they always go for students because they know once they go for students, that it will attract. The Generates attention, attention that they want. Mm. They like to draw attention to themselves. Yeah. Uh, so you can see, and people usually would raise hell that our government is not protecting people. The people will not go, people will insist that government must bail them out no matter what. So they always have in mind the fact that government would bring millions of naira to get those students released. Wow. Whereas if uh, there were ordinary people that were just picked up, maybe they were going for a wedding, they were picked up, they may, uh, it may not attract that kind of headline, and it may not even attract government attention. So deliberately, they go for uh, these students. Mm. The, in 2021, government gets secondary school in uh, Tengebi, in Kassina, I mean, in uh, Zamfara, was uh, attacked. 317 guests were taken away. Mm. I returned to that school. I went to that school in August 2022. That's a little over a year after the school had reopened. The school had just reopened. And I spoke with some of the uh, teachers. The truth is, half of the students didn't come back. I asked them the staff strength and the number of students in the school. Half of them refused to return to the school. Mm. 
because they didn't want a situation in which the children just became terrified that ah, this could happen again. And these are people that you are even doing your best to encourage them to go to school. You're trying to discourage early marriage. You're trying to improve on school enrollment and all that. And these things are happening. There's nothing that discourages children from going to school than the feeling that they are not safe within the four walls of the school. Mm. So half of them had clearly not returned to school. And that, that's significant. That bandits will come to a school, mm. and even after they were released, half of the school, not half of those who were kidnapped, half of the students refused to go back to school. So, and they were attacked other schools like that, especially in the, that same Northwest, Kaduna, you saw the uh, School of Forestry, mm. students were kidnapped, mm. they, were, they were even flogging them. Mm. So, efforts must be made to keep the school safe. In all, in about 11 to 12 local government in Casino, we are banditry is rampant. Government decided that, look, it's best to close the schools. Some schools that were even, uh, that had boarding facilities for fear of these people sneaking in at night and kidnapping them. The boarding facilities, even in the heart of town, government stopped boarding facilities because there's no guarantee that these people will not uh, come back and pick uh, this uh, this children. As we've said, 49 attacks in the northwest alone in Zamfara is still happening. Students of the Federal University in, in, uh, in Guso, they are still being kidnapped, even as we speak. They will sneak into their hostess, pick them in ones and twos, take them into the bush. So 49 attacks in the northwest alone, um, 11 attacks in the in, uh, north central. These are grim statistics. If we want to reduce drastically the number of out-of-school children, then we've got to do something about the security of, uh, of, uh, of our schools. Otherwise... We will not solve that problem. And more and more students will rather drop out of school and live with their parents. I think the government should also be deliberate in this now to make sure to ensure the safety, since they know the areas that we have um, children that are endangered yeah. in terms of you know the number of out of school children. Yeah. And we are still looking for what's her name? Leah Le 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 yeah. Years mm. after. It's a very painful thing. Like um, Baba Gide said, the schools that have been closed currently affect some no fewer than 30,000 students that can't go to, you know, children that cannot go to school. But we should send a, a note of caution. We have cited Northwest and North Central. Other states should not go and relax. Schools should be seen as everywhere all over the world, even though there are no kidnapping cases. You know, school, you know, governments must make sure that you have a kind of special focus wherever you have vulnerable people, like children. Because if there is uh, any attack of whatever form, that is, they just even don't know how the form of response that they need to, um, you know, put forward. So I think whether it's in North, Cent uh, North Central, Northwest, Northeast, state governments should take preemptive measures to ensure that they protect secondary schools and primary schools, you know, constantly by working with all these uh, security institutions to ensure that they focus on these places and ensure that this does not happen again. And sometimes, too, when alarm is raised, we are too slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was what the re response to bulk every FGC, FGC Yauri. They were writing exams, but they were alerted that these people were coming. But because they had almost come to the end of the exams, the federal government that is in charge of uh, Unity School said it's better they let them finish the exams. And before they finish the exam, Dogo Gideon and his people came. Mm. And a good number of those guests were married to the bandits. Talks. They returned home with, uh, with kids. These are 16 year olds just writing their final school examination. It's, it's, it's terrible. 
Hundred. Very bright. Yes, more than a year. We kept them. We turned them to sell slaves and all that. So it's uh, just terrible. But so even the impact on the parents. Mm. And you know your small girl. The parents yeah, sold that's... everything they had. Yeah. I know a parent who was already um, retired. He sold their building just to get that was in Kaduna to get their child or their son, son who was detained and who was abducted out of the hands of these bandits because they are very very tough when it comes to negotiation. They will insist they want fifty million. They will tell you go and get it whichever way you can. Just imagine the agony the parents of Leah Shari will be going through. Ah. Instead of you, it's better. You rather no, say it's better than you. Sure. Your, your, your child is your child dead, is dead and you see that child is is missing. my child was buried mm -hmm. and a missing one that I can't account for. Only God can bring that one back because what I heard was that she was married to one of the leaders of the group and uh, for some of those guests there is no plan to come back because some even did a video where they said, look, we are happy where we are, we are not coming back. Stockholm some city. of the Chibo guests. Mm. So, these things happen once they are in love with in the, love with the uh, animals yes, that, that pick yeah. them. They just because and they would have been the, radicalized. The, the commanders enjoy benefits that the ordinary fighters don't have, and those benefits are extended to the people married to them. So some of them are already converted, you know, mm. and um, frankly. Many of them have no plans to, to get out of the place. That is the truth. We've seen some that even got out and went back to the bush. So it's just terrible. Oh, yeah. All right. One of the beings of development in Nigeria is policy somersaults. The country director of World Bank in Nigeria, Shuban Chajurin, has urged President Bola Tinobu's administration not to backtrack on the removal of subsidy on petroleum while keeping the prices deregulated. Chaduri said what is needed is effective implementation of relief measures such as cash transfers, provision of buses for mass transit, school feeding and helping farmers to improve food production. Jide, there's, a, there's an article written by you a foreign magazine, and the article was doubting that it will get to a time that Nigerian government might not be able yeah. to continue because the measure, this measure will be very painful. Just imagine if this situation we have now persists till December. I don't think people, people can bear it again. The pain and everything is just too much because the effectiveness, this person is now talking, he's talking about how you know, we should, uh, for effective implementation of relief measures, yes. such as cash transfer, don't forget that 8,000 naira that was cancelled, provision of buses for mass transit, school feeding, and helping farmers to improve food production. Yes, the government has to step forward with uh, measures that will relieve the pains that people are going through. Um, I think that it makes sense to believe in a free enterprise. I also think that at some point, government can step in. If, for example, um, petrol prices or let me say crude oil prices are going haywire in the international market, it will hurt us a lot more. Nigeria um, can't afford to simply say, okay, we want to um, uh, just allow market forces to keep deciding. At a point, you can step in. And I've said before that even the Americans, when they see that, oh, um, petrol prices, gasoline prices are becoming too high, as a result of um, the volatility in the um, global oil market, they will release gasoline from the, the strategic reserve. They have it in abundance. They will release some of it, and that will 
help to stabilize the price because we can't afford to allow these prices to go haywire. And I'm happy that the president mm -hmm. already said, of market forces. Yes, mm. you can't. You know why this one is even a lot worse is because of the precarious state of the Naira. So for every, it is double jeopardy for us because our currency is not strong. Every time the price goes up in the international market, it will affect us a lot more than it will affect other people. Mm. Because our currency is weak. Even the currencies of countries around us are stronger now. Which, which uh, had not always be. been the case. Never used to now, be. Now, you look at, look, you look at uh, South Africa, the currency is stable, is strong, and right. consistent. Mm. You can plan. Mm. Even if international uh, oil prices go up, mm. they will never feel it the way we will feel it. Mm. Because with the Naira so weak, it is double jeopardy for mm. us. You have to deal with the uh, foreign uh, component. And then, if I had Naira is weak. So, that's why the steps that they are taking. I've seen now that they, they are trying to bring the BDCs back. Yes. They know that the BDCs will control the retail end of it, the retail end of the um, forest market, because we've not been able to sort out that retail end. Mm -hmm. You and I know where to go if we really need dollars. Dollars. Dollar. Just go. You know, uh, CBN has nothing to do with that. Mm. So that retail end mm. is the BDCs that are in charge. Now they said, okay, come, come of to us. We will be giving you business. what they are going to give them conditions. What you are, the, the rate at which you are going to sell will not be far from Official. the I and E window which is the officially recognized uh, um, window. So if it is, let me say, so, so percentage higher, mm -hmm. they will peg, they will they they put a cap on the, um, what, what, what do I call it, on the premium that you can put mm -hmm. on it. We can't be having the kind of disparity we they used don't to have. In the that because that is what is causing the, the bulk of the problem we have. Is largely, largely speculation when it comes to the, uh, the foreign exchange market. It's largely speculation. Look at this, uh, the acting CBN governor just warning that look, <laughs> gentlemen, we are planning, you, know, you will lose your money. By the next day, the, the rates began to crash just because somebody warned. Hmm. So you know that this thing is not, uh, uh, there's no economic um, explanation to. The race that we have is just people just speculating and, and just um, believing that they can get away with, uh, with these yeah. things. Nobody says foreign currency in South Africa the way we sell it here. We have made it an all commerce affair. Mm -hmm. So I also think that the gains, the gains from removing subsidy are huge. We saw that. And the distributable revenue that the states and uh, other tiers of government shared. Now, how do we begin to invest what we saved on making life less painful for our people? Mm -hmm. That is the point that this person is making. They believe in many, in many countries of the world, what bank recommends conditional cash transfer? But for us, because inflation has literally finished run riot in our country, you can't be giving people eight thousand naira and believe that you are doing something great. We have, how far can eight thousand naira go? So, what bank still believes that conditional cash transfer, once it goes to the poorest of the poor, the people who need it the most, it, it will help just... them. There is no way to not help them. Look at school feeding, for example, um, schools get schools, give them buses so that people can use those buses and all. So there are, there are, we need to take steps that will help cushion the effect. Well, mm -hmm. we, are, we are really slow in coming out with to dish out these things. Yes. This is the problem yes. that I have. And once this, these ministers take office on Monday, Stephen they Tan. have to get down Stephen to brass tacks. 
They have to settle down quickly and begin to deliver on these promises. Otherwise, more and more people will give up in, on democracy. Some of the people who are, uh, who are deluded, who are calling for military rule, it's because they are, they, they are, left, they are left frustrated. But your boss will say to us, we mm. can't lose our heads mm. because we, we appear frustrated and then we'll call for, uh, for the military. Only a fool will be calling for the military at this time. Because there is no guarantee that the military will deliver uh, what, what is not even yeah. fashionable. Mm. Now, in terms of what this um, World Bank um, chief said is saying, that um, basic provision of buses, school feeding, help farmers, and everything. These are things that we know that um, we ameliorate the sufferings of people. Yeah. And as you just said, it's expected that if they can fast track this, mm. so that this can get to the grassroots, I think ease the pain a little, yeah. bit, a little bit. I think from the figures we have uh, seen from uh, the World Bank, uh, it partly reflects our reality. The World Bank says that about 889 million poor Nigerians. And that figure might go up to 100 million. That means that... 9 million poor Nigerians. Yes. That means that half of Nigerians... And what is their own definition of poverty? People who live like $1.90 dollar per day. That's roughly about maybe 120 naira, 130 naira. 1,030 naira. You know, or 1,300 naira. And in reality, if you look at it, it means that if you have minimum wage of 30,000 naira, you are a poor man. If you have minimum wage of 40,000 40, naira, you are a poor person. And, and the reality is that millions of Nigerians don't even earn up to 40,000 naira in a month. Mm. So when we are confronted with this kind of terrible situation, and the World Bank also said that between January and May this year, the political economy, the administrators created 4 million poor Nigerians because of the CBN policies, so many SMS lost, you know, lost out, you know, small-scale industries, uh, retailers crashed because people were asked to return their funds into the bank and they never got it. So they never got, got the, the money at the, at the time they wanted the money. So we have 4 million people that became poor in the first four months of this year. And the reality is that things are getting worse. But we must be honest enough to admit that I don't know who could have resumed this last May 29 and then bring a magic change given the situation that we find ourselves. So, uh, you know, we said it here even before the election, that whatever will be the outcome of the election is, to, is going to be very tough for Nigerians. And I think we predict that, we, you know, it's going to be about some months, 10 months, 18 months, mm -hmm. before things will get better. And you see... I think it was a no Yeah. Mm, not 64 days. But, yeah, but I think there are some signposts that should give us some kind of hope beyond the removal of subsidy. Mm. We understand that the refinery in Kaduna, I mean uh, Potakot, may likely begin production before the end of the year. We understand that they have done the mechanical section, civil engineering section. What remains now is the electrical aspect. If that is correct, that is a good information. And in fact, somebody called me from Wally, who works at the Wally refinery, that the pace in which they are going now has never happened before. And we are even hearing that they want to beat the deadline. You know, we are looking at December. This year, but I said that might even be the better, be the deadline. So, if we can start production, right. I think that would be a major and the achievement. Fixing it, yeah, mm. they will stay behind, yeah. They are working 24 hours, they what I have, you know. it's not like before that they will mm. go back, yeah, they will stay yeah. behind, they run the place for some time. Mm. That's mm. part of the yeah. and people must so, not sabotage it, yeah. No, those so, people will run the place okay. for some time, yeah. you know. So, they've agreed, and the government will then decide on um, whether to sell shares and mm. that, uh, those refineries, because we can't just simply yeah. leave them like that. Mm. If we do what the Brazilians did with Petrobras, private and uh, public uh, ownership mm. of the refineries, I think that they will be better managed mm. than this. Look at what we are gaining from um, 
un challenge. Yes. It's the good. It's an example Meet. of how partnership yes. between the, the government Decent and multinationals. private individuals yeah. can work. Yeah. Every year they have an the that they give the government. And I think the government did something last week that I think is useful, giving five billion naira to you know each state. What is now important is monitoring. Yes. The state must go into agriculture. You understand? Because feeding food is one of the most essential yes. aspects. So there must be monitoring. I'm For instance, hungry. if you have uh, 20 local governments in your state and you share one billion, and each local government is able to get some 50 million, 60 million to you know put into agriculture, you know, vegetables. Uh, tomatoes, onions, and all that. We we'll the impact, you know. Mm. So the, we, we also need to define a, a kind of monitoring mechanism to ensure that states make effective use of these funds that have been released to them. I think for, for now we we need to de-emphasize. So arguing that uh, they shouldn't have made it um, just um, equal distribution. Yes, mm. distribution because, because the capacity is like Lagos now. Yeah, yeah. Twenty so, million mm, people. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Abuja, Abuja, how do you? They will mm. get it. They will see mm. how small. Mm. Abuja is compared to Kano. Mm. The uh, bigger the state in terms of the yeah, yeah, I think so. The yeah, mm. the number yes. of mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, so you look at especially states like Bayesa, compare the population of uh, hungry people in Bayesa to, mm. to Lagos, to Lagos, Lagos, or even uh, they might not compete with Alimo mm. 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 you know? So, but I knew even that one would bring controversy. Mm. Yeah, and I think it was the Kano government that was already even. Uh, accusing the federal government of favoring Lagos when mm. it was first muted. Mm. Mm. That Lagos will get this kind of, we get this. The man came out and was saying that the thing was uh, not properly done. Now, uh, five billion each so, is their luck. For the smaller states, I think is their luck. All right. Most times, effective synergy is all that is required to achieve a set objective. As such, the Acting Controller General of Customs at Dewali Adeni has called for a strategic partnership between customs and communities in the fight against smuggling, as well as raising revenue. Speaking at a function in Akure on those states, he said the custom will continue to generate revenue for government and render help to members of the public. TVC News Ayodiji Muradio has the story. The Acting Controller General of the Nigeria Customs, Adewale Adeniyi, is on a visit to Ondo State, where he met with relevant stakeholders. Shortly after a visit to the palace of the Deji of Akure, the custom boss visited an orphanage. Adeniyi said the mandate of the Nigeria Customs is to bring sanity to commercial activities and generate revenue for the country. It stressed that revenue cannot be generated in gold cities, but in the society, communities, and border areas within state commands. Adini explained that the formation will partner orphanages in the country. An agency of government, our mandate basically is to work around uh, and generate revenue for the country. Now, we do not generate this revenue. Uh, in a ghost city, we have a responsibility to the community that help us to assist us in making uh, those kind of revenue generation. Things like this that are responsible for taking care of the community that we serve and forge partnership with such organizations. Those urge the controller general to continue to support the vulnerable in the society. That children that need to have access to all kind of rights that the Sharia law give provision for. Because in my operation, you see, many, when children are not having a father or a mother or even uncle, even when they have uncles or relatives, they deny them. And with, with that, you can see that they, are, they, are, they do not have access to all these basic things. Controller General believes that there is the need for government agencies to assist the less privileged in the society. IODG, Moradi, your TVC News. Yes, um, Nigerian Customs and um, effective synergy with the, the community. community. Yes, especially border communities. Yes. I don't like the constant friction between um, 
the customs and border communities. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, all, they are always quarrelling, sometimes leading to bloodbaths. So smuggling, that. smuggling at the heart yes. of it. You see, do, do, in a lot of those communities, they made up their minds that their economy will be around smuggling. Yes, because of the way they are positioned. Yes, because so they are located. Or everything they so to is this usually a tough battle keeping them in check. And it's not in the southwest alone. If you go to the north, there is a little state like Casina with a lot of border posts. Yes. Oh, you have a lot a of tough battle. Yes, people want to smuggle rice. Yes, so these guys who use um, stack Okada. rice or mm. eh, yes, mm. on Okada they can carry ten bags. Yes, just I don't know how they do it. They move. They just they move. have their roots and they move in long convoy so that it will be difficult to stop them. Yeah, mm. you know when they when there are so many like they will easily overwhelm uh, customs. So, but. You are sabotaging the economy of your country if you allow freedom, I mean, uh, um, uh, if you allow smuggling to go on with reckless abandon. And these communities have traditional rulers. So I, I get clearly the message of the acting Comptroller uh, General of Customs that, look, our desire is to make money for the country, but we need to work with you. We need you to uh, jump in with us so that we can achieve our aim. So we start having constant friction with these communities. There is a need to work together with them so that they can achieve the aim of um, stopping uh, smuggling. Or even if you can't stop it, at least bring it down to the uh, barest minimum. Mm. During the time of Ahmadu Ali, the approach to customs was quite different. And if you remember the controversial policy of cars being, you know, going after car lots and everything, mm. and this person is now, now partnering with this community here. Yeah, that look, instead of us to get into town before, you know, the alarm is raised, that we can work together and see how we're yeah. going to do it. I think this is a different. Approach. Yeah, I, I think this is a very um, better lead than never. Custom is one of the most important uh, sector in Nigeria. That generates last year alone, custom generates I think two point fourteen trillion in the first ten months after oil. Yes. So now the customs is strategic in the sense that apart from revenue, it also it also needs to protect local industry because textile. If everything you bring everything abroad from abroad, yeah. rice, yes, nobody yeah. will buy. You know the issue of security. You know, uh, trans uh, national crime, terrorism, and all that. But you know what these smugglers, these uh, criminals do? I happen to have lived in a border community before, mm. and smuggling was a big time business there. What they do is that if they want to come to your community, if you want to use your community as a route, they first of all do a kind of reconnaissance. They do intelligence guy go to your community, meet with your people. The younger people there, they buy beer for them, make friends with them. You know recognize, identify the major opinion leaders, give them money, rice, and all that. Mm. So once they're able to buy over that community, once they are coming, those ones will give them passage. In fact, sometimes when they don't give those communities enough money, they mount root blocks. They come down, talk to them, give them money, give them food, talk to the traditional ruler. So they work hand in hand. And they also gather intelligence for them. When customs or police people are coming, those communities will phone them. Look, what this, this is what is happening. So they benefit from it. Mm. But I think what the council is doing now, that what they want to do, is to beat them into their own game. Recruit people from frontier communities. Ensure you work with them. Work with traditional rulers. Work with youth leaders in those communities. And educate them on the danger of collaborating with criminals. So I think it's a very, it's a, let me just say, very perfect strategy. If you can get those communities onto your side, and they are working for you, I think you are going to make a lot of progress. Because we cannot talk about, uh, you know, policing a community without involving the people. Once the people also see that they are stakeholders, you understand the point. They will work with uh, customers and going to, you know, help customers to achieve a lot. So I, I think I really want to comment on the, you know, on the new, uh, you know, uh, custom boss for taking this um, decision. But it should go beyond paper, it should, it should go beyond rhetorics. They should take practical steps to ensure that, you know, they make it work in practical terms. Do you think that they should be empowered? As in empowered, they should be equipped because those guys that they are fighting against, that they are moving against, some of them, they have uh, 
Armed. So they are armed, sir. Some they of them have armed. supernatural powers. They are already armed. They are already armed. In fact, mm. uh, they've been accused of gunning down people on a number of occasions. They are armed. At least they are in a position to defend themselves. Yeah. Well, maybe in terms of manpower, maybe they should they should recruit more so that this our border will be. Yes, but um, their job is not to protect the borders. We have uh, migration officers who are mm. also armed. You know, we have NDLAs too. But compare uh, the number of borders we have, the porosity of our border. Yeah, that is it. Uh, the the uh, immigration, they are not. In talking in terms of smuggling now, the outlets that these guys. They there are well. too many, a lot of smugglers don't use the conventional border mm. uh, posts. They've and created their own routes. And the customs of them? Well, they, they've created their own routes. Some of those routes uh, are not manned by customs men. I've seen, even in Casino, I went to GBI, I saw people smuggling. And it's not uh, a border post. They just devised, they found a way uh, in the bush. Or to 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 smuggle is a tough job that the custom has, uh, but you have to give them credit. They're risking their lives. A lot of them get killed mm. by this uh, smuggler because the smugglers are desperate. Mm. They get killed, you know. So, but uh, you just have to encourage them. I know that under this man, this new man, the customs will make more money because they are trained, mm. and it's not everything that you use force to do. Um, sometimes good thinking can achieve what force cannot do. So I expect him to achieve better um, successes than his predecessor. Um, I'm confident that that will happen. All right. We'll take this breather. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's a journalist hangout on Sunday. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. It's always a great morning on the TVC Breakfast Show. Thanks for joining us on TVC Breakfast. With the array of stories that matter and what's behind them. As you say, the first blow indicates the direction of government. Tell us what really is going on between uh, your union and the federal government. Once it's generated, he has to don't use it, it's it, waste. It's we are not even sure whether we have a strategy for security. Are you uh, saying that there was nothing wrong in that? Was he the one driving the taxi? Answer the question. Reveal your morning with all you need to know. Like the Oku Oku, Ode, Wake and that. Yes, yes. <laughs> just mundane lyrics. Yes. How does that fit into uh, your scheme of events or duties right now? No chief of staff, no general has the right. Call a governor to order. The governor has been elected by his people. Start your day right because this is the breakfast show that adds to your breakfast. TVC Breakfast, weekdays at 7 a.m. only on TVC News. Thank you for staying with us. This is Journalist Hangout on Sunday. Another feud is brewing between residents of the huh? Federal Capital huh? Territory, FCT, Abuja, and the authorities. This time, some concessionaires of the FCT Park and Pay Policy have kicked against their exclusion from the introduction of the policy in the country's capital. In a petition to President Bola Tinobu, they described their exclusion from the policy as an act of injustice. Let's share the story by TVC News, Helen Osamede Ekins with you. 
Park and Pay is a policy which imposes fees on motorists for parking their vehicles in specific locations or streets within the FCT metropolis. The policy was suspended in 2014 after a high court judgment stopped the FCTA from collecting fees from residents. The court ruled that the policy was not backed by law. Nine years down the line, the FCT authority has reintroduced the policy after doing what it calls the due diligence recommended by the courts. But the mode of introduction of the policy is being contested by some of the previous concessioners who says they were the pioneers of the projects. FCT gave us a letter suspending the four companies. That, and in the letter of suspension, they clearly say that you do, they, were, they, are, they are abiding by the, law, by the court judgment that we should be patient, they will do all the necessary legal procedures, and we will be invited back to come and continue our project. So by 2020, they still invited us. They want us to come and do the parking again. They have done the regulation, they've done everything. We said, okay, well, we're ready. Suddenly, we now, on Friday, on 4th of August, we, we saw the, uh, uh, around 7 in the evening, somebody brought to my notice that they've signed an agreement with the two of the company, that's ATB and Ajek, without us. So, uh, so what kind of injustice is that? And why would this, why will they not learn? This is the, the same thing you did in 2016 that, that, that accumulated to government paying two point something billion damages. This is damage that 2.4 billion has not been paid up to now. And you are still going ahead with the same kind of one. So we are, that's why we said, okay, this thing is beyond the civil servants. Their own is their selfishness. These people are about to retire in a few days' times. The director, the permanent secretary, everybody is about to go. So they want to fix themselves. The few cheated and have petitioned the president for intervention. They are demanding to be given the right of first refusal in the reintroduction of the policy and that the 2016 court judgment which demanded that they be compensated should be obeyed. So we're appealing to the president. He's a listening president. Everybody has seen his body language, what he has been doing since he came in. He listens to the public. We're appealing to him to let, let him intervene. Look into this matter. Why are they in a hurry? The minister has not been able to appoint you. Are you wanting to kickstart a project? Why are they in a hurry? If not because of their own personal interest. Why will you exclude the pioneers? We are the ones that start. We are the professionals. We have a server. If you are in Abuja in 2011, then my company is the most professionally run. We have the parking card. That you don't need to, with our car parking car, you don't need anybody to come and be harassing you. Everybody knows that on the street of the, Did any of them have that kind of facility? They don't. We have a server, a dedicated server. Having heard from the complainant, we visited the transport secretariat of the FCT to seek their side of the story. Wadata Bodinga is the director of traffic management of the Federal Capital Territory Administration. Acknowledging the issue on ground, he expresses the authority's readiness to negotiate with the aggrieved parties. That FCT uh, is always often to uh, including bringing them back based on coming down to sit on the table and agree on uh, conditions that comes up from uh, the boss side. And uh, we have open discussion with them before now and the discussion for us is still on and they are always uh, welcome to be uh, accommodated in this thinking provided we agree on some of the issues that has to do with settling out of court and so many other issues that we have been discussing on they are all aware of it they know that uh, there has never been a time that they come to fcta and uh, we close our doors to them our doors are always open. We want them. There are people that we uh, enjoy working with in the past, and we are also looking forward to uh, have them back. It's just for us to sit down and agree. The park and pay policy, which is expected to start soon, is said to be rebranded to ensure it does not infringe on the rights of residents. Helen Osamede Kings, TVC News, Abuja. All right, joining us from our Abuja studios for more insights on this is a stakeholder in the FCT 
Pack and Pay Policy, Ilyasu Abdu. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on, this, on your station. Can you tell Nigerians, can you explain to Nigerians what is uh, this Pack and Pay Policy? about and and um, why you think you are being excluded at this time okay thank you very much uh, as the your reporter rightly said we are the pioneers we started hack and pay the process since 2004 it culminated with the signing of agreement and commencement of operation in 2012. While we were there, we have to engage some foreign companies to partner with us in terms of funding, technical aspects, because not, it has never been done in Nigeria before. So there was commitments. We never knew the government doesn't have the right to 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 that program. They don't have the legal rights to roll out that program. We never knew until the court now suspended the whole thing. And they gave us, as she rightly said, they gave us uh, a suspension letter. And after the suspension letter, like a year after, we saw an advert on, on a newspaper telling us indirectly that indicted companies should not apply. They, they are revitalizing the project. We now went to meet them and say, what is this? They say, no, 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 there is government policy. It's none of their business. So before we know, they have given out the concession, concession, our, our concession to 15 different companies. So we have no option than to approach the court, for the court to interpret our contract we have with them, the legal agreement we enter into. And the Hybuja High Court saw it and said, okay, your contract is binding and subsisting. But there is an arbitration clause in it. So he recommended, he, 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 he advised us to go to Abuja Multidot Course House because in our agreement, it's Abuja Multidot Course House, the, the arbitration venue. So we went there, we, got, we, we won at the arbitration of 2 billion 44 naira for the two companies. We are two companies. My company is Integrated Parking Services and the other is Platinum Parking Management. The Platinum Parking Management sold his property in UK to relocate to Nigeria. For this project. So, at the Abuja, after getting the award, we went to the High Court and registered the award. We made, made them aware, pay us this money so that we can settle some of our debtors because we, we, some venture capitalists gave us money then to, 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 to commence the project. They refused. So, they, did, they, they, they keep on inviting us for some several meetings. We have meeting, meeting upon meeting, meeting upon meeting. Until, uh, until till February, I think February the 7th of this year, the Pansec invited us to his office, saw him by 8 p.m. in the evening. He, he, he advised us to write him a letter they were interested in coming back because he said specifically that the minister said, taking, taking the memo to Federal Reserve Council without us is injustice. That, that's why he's inviting us to come and write a letter to him that we are interested in working. Say, yeah, that's why we are here. If not so, we have other options. Because in the agreement we have with them, the federal government have waived its sovereign, national sovereignty over it. That we can go anywhere in the world to attach government property. Even if it's Nigerian warplane, warship, we have the right. It's just like the other case of this, this gas-associated project that they, they, they got arbitration of almost $11 billion. We, we have that clause in our contract too. But... We don't want that. This is our country. We are not foreigners. The development of our country supersedes anything. The, we have also to be attaching FCTA properties. No, we don't want to do that. That's why we have been talking with them. The, uh, we got this judgment in 2017, and we are in 2023. So when we, when we learned that the project had been rolled out, had been, agreement had been signed with the two other companies, that they even don't have a contract, because that's why they didn't go to court. Because they were superimposed on us then. They don't have any contract. The government was about to go in, and they just brought them from nowhere, and they started giving us trouble. 
they are the major cost of what we are what we pass through that when people are saying people are hiding under flower people are doing this they are the cost because they are not professionals they don't have any foreign partners nothing they just came in with the eye of making money and this 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 scheme is not for making money the purpose of this scheme is orderliness orderliness the essential beauty of abuja it brought it out and insecurity because then when we are doing these things you hardly hear vandalism on the street of abuja vehicles or theft but these people came in you know, they start moving with clamps on their shoulders clamping cars they are not you can't identify who they are they are not wearing uniform this is like that before you know there is chaos everywhere so when the government when the court when the court suspended everybody went to sleep but look at the same people now they use our own document to process their, the, the, uh, the ICRC no objection certificate and allocated our own area. Like my, this, my own is zone A. The zone A was given to uh, Najek. The other company, PPMS, is zone B. They, they, they gave zone B to, to, to uh, ATV. Why? What have we done? Are we not citizens of this country for crying loud? If we are criminal minded, we will say, okay, the venture countries are disturbing us. They say, okay, come. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to London. We, we can seize, we can touch, seize any Nigerian asset. We say, no, we are not part of it. I won't, I won't, I, I, I won't, I won't betray my country. Because it's the country that gave me opportunity. We, when we started the process, we had 36 companies that bidded for this project. Out of 36, five were, were shortlisted. Out of these five, only two were, were, were awarded the, the project. So why will I, a country that gave me this kind of opportunity, why will I go and start attaching a watch? Attaching a, or, or attaching a, a foreign bank account. I can't do that. And we have been talking with government every day. But now the government, the, 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 the civil servant and the, they are about to go out. So I don't know the whole, the, 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 the rush that, that is, is in the whole thing to sign this thing and say, this is, a, this is a new administration. They should have just allowed it to study the whole thing first and then find a middle ground. So that this project can commence without wrang wrangling. So that was why we petitioned the president. Because that's, the, 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 there was no means that then, when they did this, we have no option than to president to president. And uh, uh, by the special grace of God, our pe pe petition is, is given a listening here. And very soon, the resident of Abuja will get to hear the, 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 full, the, the full story. The issue of we coming to meet them, if we come to meet them, is master servant relationship. These are civil servants. They know we want to work for our country. If you come to me, they, 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 they will start giving you conditions that maybe will not be palatable to us. So we avoid this. If they wanted us to come, they have been any, any time we go for a meeting, they invited the writers officially. Yes, right, we don't need to come through the back door and meet you. Writers officially, on social days, social time, social venue, we come. We come with, whoever, with all, all, all our paraphernalia. We sit down, we discuss, and it will, it will be put in, in, in minutes of meeting. So that everybody will have nobody will deny anything tomorrow. So these are these are our appeal to the FCT residents and the president and the, especially the new minister that was appointed to. You should look at it still holistically and, and resolve this matter. We are the pioneers. We have committed resources. We have, as I said, equipment that is hanging on our neck up to tomorrow. This is nine years now that the money, the, some of these debts have, have have not been serviced for like seven years now. And then the, 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 the our lenders will now hear that we are not even inside. How can, can, how can, can we sleep? So this is my appeal, as I said, to the president and the new minister. Mm. So in terms of um, the um, capacity, how much can this um, back and pay? In your own estimation, how much can it generate for the FCT in a year, if properly um, handled. Yes, uh, like then, when we started in 2012, a month I generated like 27 million a month. And now what you have to understand, the capacity, the volume of traffic in town has tripled. So if in 2012 you make 27 million a month, and now we should be like, at least, even if you don't, if you don't make 100%, we should be like talking about like 50 million a month. So if you have four companies there, you're making FCT, will be making like 200 million every month from on-street parking. Mm. 
So what do you expect the, um, the new administration to do now? Look at it, because we are in a democracy, and the broader is government of the people by the people. They should look into the injustice that is about to make to us. We have, an, we have a judgment that has not been settled, an award from a court of competent jurisdiction that the FCC has not obeyed, and now depriving us from coming back to the street? What have we, where have we gone wrong? I didn't think we, we, we've, as we got the judgment, we were fighting them, taking them here, jacking them here, attaching their property. They would say we're aggressive. We have never been aggressive. We've always looked at, look for the middle ground. Because we, we have the intention that, okay, this is a, the Abuja is a bubbling city. Anybody that is patient with this thing, one day it will, it will, it will bear fruits. So that was why we didn't, we didn't do all this. Lawyers are there. They are ready to everybody. That, you know, the, our, the, our creditors are there. Put mounting pressure on us. But we restrain ourselves. No, we have a vision. This is our country. We have no new country other than this one. So it's an opportunity given to us. We will never abuse it. Okay. I want to thank you, a stakeholder in the FCT Park and Pay Policy. Liasu Abdu, thank you for your intervention. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. you did. I know that in a very short time, Abuja is going to, you know, be competing with Lagos in terms of, yes. you know, this idea. <laughs> yeah, if, yes. he was, if he's well, properly honest. There's so much potential. Yes. There. And mm. he's, the, he's the second fastest growing city in Nigeria. Mm. You know, uh, the second fastest growing town. So we're taking Port Harcourt. Mm. Um, people are going to Abuja. From the north central, from the southeast, from the south south. Imagine the traffic on the People weekday now. Going to Abuja. As seen. And the, the, being centrally located is um, it's it's easy to access from all parts of the country. So it's really the potential is big. It's really huge, mm. and um, you can understand the game that is being played. Mm. How can People who are just about to leave, who are about to leave office, hurriedly get into this kind of transactions. Mm -hmm. If it is not um, meant to just uh, interest, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that the the incoming minister, oh, FCT, of FCT, uh, will, will look at this because we'll to resolve. It's, it's better to resolve the matter rather than wait for them to go to court. Again, Mali? Yeah, I think he said something very important that they are, you know, they are the pioneers. So if they are the pioneers, I don't think there's any reasonable, no reasonable ground to have uh, excluded them. And I believe the more, the merrier. If you just have very few companies, you know, I don't think they will generate as much as when you have more stakeholders, especially when those who have been in that business for a very long time. Mm -hmm. We should also look at the impact on labor. If you don't involve them, a lot of people will lose their jobs, their employees. Are. So I hope the new FCT minister, and I believe uh, the president, will listen to their demand. All right. As Nigerians await inauguration of ministers designate on Monday, 21st of August, reactions have continued to trail assignment of portfolios to them by President Bola Tinobu. While most people are still trying to get over the surprises, Others are concerned about capacity of some of the ministers designate to deliver on the assigned portfolios. Jide, tomorrow they are going to officially swear these ministers in. They spend the, um, week, this weekend, um, yesterday and today, on documentation at the office of the SGF. So, but. These portfolios is what Nigerians are still talking about, and it must, must have taken a lot of time, a lot of um, consideration mm. in getting these guys, assembling this thing. It's not, uh, there's a lot of hard work that went into this, and the president was very deliberate. He also looked at the way the elections went, you mm. know, in determining mm. how many. I mean, political consideration. A lot of political consideration. In and out. When, in you and out. Down, when you sit down and thoroughly assess. Analyze. That is when mm. you know. Okay. Um, the Northwest has 10 ministers. Mm. And um, as, well as we have seen, 
they just are just narrowly higher than the southwest. So if you look at the way the elections went, mm. he got 30% of his votes from the northwest, mm. followed by the southwest. Mm. And then in the southeast, he got 1.5% of his votes. You know? So he has done some, some, some of the things that we didn't expect. We've always pushed that information should be broken into two. Mm -hmm. But the president went ahead to break it into three. Allowing tourism to stand alone. Tourism standing alone shows that this president is out to make money. Because he knows there is tremendous potential there in tourism that we have left unattended for so long. Who says that Obudukatu Ranch, for example, Obudukatu Ranch and Resort cannot be our own Camp David where we can host world leaders, where the ministers can have their retreats? Retreats, yeah. You know, Obasanjo used it in I'm that manner you. in the I'm past. You. The weather is pristine. You know, it is is a very beautiful place, mm. and nothing stops us as a nation from building something similar. So that even in Mambila, because the Mambila weather is colder mm. Taraba. than Obudu, yes, it's colder than Obudu, and the same mountain range that goes all the way mm. right into Cameroon. So the beauty, those undulating hills, the beauty is literally the same. So, a minister of tourism has her work cut out for, for, for her. And they brought in a woman uh, who is an ITS pact, you know. Um, she ran, uh, she was uh, um, head of uh, support services for one of the new generation banks. And she is someone with a broke, broken, uh, proven track record in IT. But it doesn't mean that she cannot do the job uh, of uh, tourism because a minister is by nature just um, meant to supervise. Now you look at um, waterfalls in our country that we can develop. We have Ferin Rua in uh, Nasarawa State. We have uh, in Jesha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in uh, Oshun Street. Street. Yes. I know we have several in the Kitty State. So many. Uh, the Kogo Sea that uh, had been mm -hmm. abandoned so for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, where you, you can get both cold water and hot water simultaneously. And I've not been have, there. even the fish, yeah. uh, um, um, Arugungu Fishing Festival. Oh, big one. Both regatta Kebis. in, uh, in uh, Bayesa. Nigeria has beautiful places unexplored that a minister of tourism would sit down and really drop a plan. I've said before that, look, UAE, they have oil. Mm. But they made up their minds that, look, this uh, um, hydrocarbon cannot last forever. Mm. Let's go into tourism. Look at what they've made of tourism. Tourism is the main thing now. Look at what they've made of tourism. When they build that the highest building in the world, people go there. Mm. They, are, they want all they want to do is get to the top of the building mm. and they pay. Yes, they you pay. See the whole yes, there is so much money being made. You know, so Nigeria, I believe that it was a very good decision to do this, create that ministry, and then um, there is also a, a part of that ministry is also the um, arts, culture. And um, I mean, the second part of the, you know, when he, when he broke um, information into three, one, culture part, and one part is art, culture, and uh, creative economy. So creative economy is where you have the movies, the entertainment, mm. uh, and music, well. and we are doing very well. Mm. Everywhere, Ayo, that song, uh, um, that uh, Ashake song. Yes. Uh, no, at all. Only, I'm saying no, no. Ghanaian schools, <laughs> Ghanaian schools, they are competing for the, the, the dance uh, competition. Mm. Everyone is shooting movies about that song. They want 
they want to be the best all over the world, South Africa, because when I see the video, I will look at a signage. I will see that this is not Nigeria. Mm. Nigerian music has taken over the all world. Over. All over. Nigerian artists have taken over the world. That Afrobeat is something else in the U.S. now. So now officially everywhere. Anato Musawa has to find a way to work with these people. Get the best of them. See how much support God, uh, I mean, government can give them. And then finally, talking about um, um, the marine and blue economy. That's me. That is, I was reading um, um, the lawyer, um, um, Agbakoba. Mm -hmm. He said this is what they had fought for for more than 40 years. Mm -hmm. That this, that... We had neglected this sector for too long. Maritime. That it should have. In fact, what, what they were suggesting was to have a minister in charge of shipping. Mm. But what the president has done now makes them very happy. And he's saying, look, that sector alone will give Nigeria a minimum of seven trillion a year. Agwakuba is the top player in the maritime sector. Yes. The maritime lawyer. Yes. Mm. You know? So what we now have, because uh, Ghana is trying to turn itself to the shipping hub of uh, West Africa. Mm. But with the minister in place now, uh, Bumi Ojo, Bumi Ojo will be in charge of uh, Nemasa, National Inland Waterways, MPA, uh, MPA Shippers Council. He is a minister to watch already because he has to deliver. Mm. He, he, like a big chunk of transportation has now been Div divided. Uh, yes, mm. has been given to him. Mm. So, Oyetola uh, will be in charge of railways, railways. road transport, waterways, road uh, road transport. Mm. Because now um, they are going to bring in vehicles, yes. CNG so fired the engines and yes. all that. Those ones coming in, Oyetola will be the one to supervise, to make sure ensure that it gets to our people, you know, effectively yeah. distributed to Puts our people. Use. So there is no way that. He too will not be in the eye of the is very big. And then our Greek, because the government has said it's going to do a lot in the area of our Greek, uh, going to cultivate more than 50,000 hectares and all that. So the our Greek minister knows that his job is, is cut out for him. That's um, um, Abaka Kiari, mm. the middle past acting chairman of, uh, of the APC. From Borno State. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, he left the Senate mm -hmm. to become a deputy chairman, and then became acting chairman of APC, and then became minister. Now, you know. So, look, people can't wait. Anybody who is minister of education, you will be in the eye of the storm. Mm. People <laughs> will focus on you, and we have someone now with tremendous experience. Um, the professor Tahir Mama, he was in uh, BU, I mean, uh, Maiduguri, student, uh, then student affairs, head of department in law, and later he became deputy DG at the law school, became DG of law school, and ended up at uh, Bayes University as VC. And, the, pres and the, uh, the president decided to do what in football they call statement poaching. Statement poaching. Poaching meant to send, send a signal. They got someone working for the, uh, the vice presidential candidate of the uh, Labour Party. Got him on board. He left his job as VC of Bayes University. Now he's, he's manning the education ministry. That's who issues are there. So it will always be in the news. <laughs> who are those guys you'll be looking for? Today <laughs> has uh, highlighted some of his own... <laughs> yeah, well, I think, uh, first of all, we need to appreciate the new sectors that were created. You know, um, marine and blue economy, from what we've had, it's a trillion dollar economy, you know, that is uh, a very famous many countries all over the world. It's really in Africa, South Africa, and Egypt are very good examples. Nigeria has a coastline of about uh, 853 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And that is a lot. Mm -hmm. A marine economy, a blue economy is about preservation of marine and biodiversity for sustainable use. You ask ourselves, what are we doing with our coastlines? Mm -hmm. Abroad, that's a huge, huge business. You go to some countries 
you know, some states in the U.S., people just go for sun bath. They pay. Millions of people go for sun bath. They just go stay to the beach, stay at that beach for hours, from the morning to the evening. Turn. What are we doing with our coastline? If you go to some of our coastlines, you see waste products, you know, being thrown into, you know, the coastline. So I think this is a real turnaround in terms of uh, creativity and how to harness um, bio, uh, our biodiversity for, you know, the promotion of our economy. So we are looking up to see how uh, this, there is going to be a turnaround, you know, in our blue economy. And I also think uh, innovation, communication, and digital economy. You know, the new minister, you know, who is also a young man. Boson. Yes, Boson, and who has a PhD. We are looking up to see how, because these are new areas, you know, in global economy where people look at Google, look at the money, you know, Google makes, look at Twitter, look at Facebook, Facebook. India. And they are all created in Asia. They are creating their own oh. version of, uh, you know, of Sender, of uh, Facebook, and all that. So we can do the same thing also in Nigeria. So I think, and good enough, the uh, boss of, uh, I think, Google came to Nigeria recently you know, to see the president. They are talking about collaborating with Nigeria to create. People can stay at home without going anywhere and make millions of naira. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a very good uh, development. I also feel that when, uh, as, uh, you know, now that we have a minister for marine and blue economy, coastal states, Ondo State, for instance, has 480 coastal, is the longest in, you know, in Nigeria. They, they also have uh, state commissioners that we work, you know, in these areas, and also Lagos, are ports, they are you know, Port Harcourt. That we have neglected. Yeah, mm -hmm. the states to create these ministries to collaborate and work with the federal government so that we are not going to believe everything for the waterways. Yeah, waterways, you know, for the federal government alone. Look at Onisha port, yeah. Barrow port. Yeah. We have ports. Look at, uh, you look at uh, our own lake, Kanji Lake, you know, that since 1968, 65 or 68, or about good potential for fishing and all that. So I believe that this kind of creativity is what we need in order to be able to turn around our economy. We can't yes. continue to just rely on uh, the passing we used to do, oil and all that. So I think it's a huge opportunity, and we should also monitor them as journalists to ensure that we give feedback to Nigerians. Yeah. So in the next six months, 12 months, we want to be writing to see whether they are working effectively to ensure that things uh, are turned around. I also think in terms of uh, works, um, the yeah. new minister read yeah. civil engineering. Yeah. A lot of people will not know. Mm -hmm. So some people are wondering why do we give that uh, up for food. But I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to From see how we can. Yeah. They can turn that place around in terms of roads, you know, across the country to network and create, uh, create a situation where people will Your begin to have more the, trust he knows how in the road transportation. And roads. Yeah. Judy, one thing that we didn't enjoy throughout the eight years of Momodu Buari is setting targets for these ministers, yes. giving them a kind of KPI. Mm -hmm. Buari left those guys, they were just From eight they were years. There, eight years. Mm -hmm. They were just enjoying themselves and everything. I think it is time now that these ministers, you perform, you are in. You don't perform, you shape out. Yes, I think they have to give them... That is the, what we have to... The kind of performance index. They have to, the president has to come up with KPI for this. Mm. Yeah. Is that kind of person... What is ex already, what he expects is from that them? that kind of person? Yes. You know, on Fashola said it, mm. that look, the other man, once he gives you a job, he turns away. This one will give you a job he wants to see how you are doing it. Mm. He's a micro... Uh, Manager. Uh, so he, he's, he's going to micromanage you. So I want to believe that Ashwaju is not simply going to leave them alone. It's, it's not someone reluctant to reshuffle his cabinet. I believe that he, he would want no to... No losses. See. That cannot be done within four years. Uh, you many can reshuffle long. cabinet after two years. Yeah. It can be a minor reshuffle, no, a major just reshuffle out when it's necessary, you mm, can do it. Mm. And if ministers that are not working, it's not difficult to know. Yeah. If I go to Abuja now with uh, um, Wiki as the first Sautana to become minister of Abuja, you know, people will say, uh, I just said Adeogun. I just said Adeogun was not FCT minister, he was a uh, special duties minister given the FCT uh, to supervise. The first Sautana mm. to become minister of FCT is Yisom, is in Wike. And if Wike fails to perform, it will be obvious. He's a performer. 
It will be obvious because if all of us who go to Abuja, for example, I know the city very well. When we start seeing changes yeah. in some areas, we will know the changes that we mm. can attribute to him. Mm. When some things are not happening, we will also know. Everybody talks about Herufai. You may not like his style, mm. but he brought sanity when he yeah. was in Abuja. Mm. We don't have a situation in which even shrubs, Abuja cannot trim his shrubs. Mm. Some of them are overgrown, and they are meant to be beautified, properly uh, 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 manicured. Mm. You know? So, we need a minister who will complete the projects because there are projects. When you are driving through Abuja, you see bridge projects, uh, road projects, and all that. Yes. We need a minister that, that settles down mm. to complete those projects mm. and comes out uh, comes up with his own projects that will beautify the city. And Abuja is um, is so much concrete. We need to create more green areas that can even serve as um, even tourist centers mm, mm. in our own uh, 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 capital. Mm. So we look forward to a lot of positive things happening, you know, now that um, these, these ministers have been given their portfolios, we will be interrogating their efforts. Mm. And even the president, we are not going to leave him alone. Mm -hmm. We are we'll reminding him of the so, need to the promise to give these guys KPI and ensure that they work for our people. Not this is not the time for Redundant. a minister to yeah. be lounging around when I there's can work mention to be done. Zone. Last minute, that's the, if you see, you discover that that's, this person yeah, spent time. Yeah, two times. It's not a their fault. Minister that I know. You can't even remember. She sat down there. She was there. <laughs> it's not their fault. If uh, the person who gave you a job does not care whether you do the job mm. or not. Is it the fault of the person? Some controversial ministers who are who are all uh, all um, empty gas without substance. Mm -hmm. They left them. Nothing happened to them. I mean, that eight what years. was uh, eight years? I think this will define the direction the administration of Bola Tinubu is going. Yeah. By the time these guys take um, office tomorrow. Yeah. There should be feedback mechanism. You know, we should need we need to know who is working. They should report at least maybe every month. Report about you know to the to the fact this is what we have done. This is what we plan to do. Yes. It should not be left for the president alone to the civil society, media practitioners mm. must constantly monitor them, you know, so that we don't just their toes. Yeah, you know, monitor them to know. Don't have, to do not have dormant ministers. Yeah. No, no, no. I'll just no, sit down there this time. These are difficult them. times. People must work. And the ministries have been um enlarged yes. so that mm. created so that we can it's get created, the best yes. out of them. Yeah. Yes. So if they don't work, then the essence of expanding and breaking up ministries uh, will have been defeated. Mm. For example, in information with Idris, now in charge of information and uh, national orientation, we want to see improvement. Mm. Talk to the Nigerian people, the language that they understand. We want to see what uh, Anato Musa Musawa will mm, be doing yeah. with the Davidos of this world. Mm. We, they have Piyamo to must get yeah. to the root of what happened to that airline. Yes. That's mm. our that is that is that they brought first assignment. You know, Piyamo yes. was a surprise. Mm. I never knew we would get such a game. Mm. Yes. But the president... Uh, the that in Nigeria, he must get to the bottom of that transaction. And let's yes. see. And then, if and we want to have a national career, we should have a decent one. Not yes. Not uh, something that Nigerians are, are not believe is crooked. That's not mm. what we want to see. Mm. And... We also want to see unanimity. This situation whereby a minister will be working across purposes, a CBN governor wanted to come up with a Naira redesign. The finance minister, minister of finance was not aware. Mm. And the minister, the finance minister is supposed to be the coordinating minister for the economy. I think mm. it is clear now because it is yeah. stated here Wale Adu. that Wali Adu is the coordinating. So we want to see them working together yeah. to boost our economy. And all of those disagreements that we see must not, I mean, they, there must be no room for that. Mr. President has to make that clear. Mm. Coming up, um, and trying to cause division among yourself no, will not be tolerated. All right. And finally, more than 40 years after creation of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, in 1976, there are still unfinished businesses about perceived grievances by the inhabitants. At different fora, they make demands from government to assuage this feeling. In continuation of this, the inhabitants outline their demand and expectations in the Tinubu presidency. Jiri. 
we started this last week and um, just to give a kind of voice to this inhabitant of um, Abuja and um, the status of Abuja. Inhabitants. Mm, original Yes, the aborigines. Yes. Um, for me, anything that will um, ensure that Abuja is treated like in a, a, a Nigerian state. I go for it. Abuja should be treated like a state. Let them have all of those things that um, uh, all of the advantages, benefits that go to state must go to them. Mm. And once that happens, if the original inhabitants and the people, uh, the people who have settled there. They are going to all benefit. It, Abuja is for every Nigerian. And that's why I'm happy with what the president has done by um, giving um, the FCT minister to someone from southern Nigeria. It's like setting a record. I think that's the first of its kind. Yes, it's like setting a record because uh, a southern. And they even never... have a, a minister from the FCT. Yes, there was a court case. There was an appeal court uh, judgment mm -hmm. that directed government uh, to appoint, in 2018, that directed government, in a declarative judgment, to appoint an Abuja indigenous as one of the ministers. Mm -hmm. So Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu has obeyed this court, court case. Court, uh, yes, that declarative order of the court. Ashwa Jibola has obeyed it. By going somebody ahead. from the FCT, yes, uh, original inhabitant, you know, okay. uh, the, uh, the, uh, the indigenous. One of them is now, I think, Minister of um, Special Duties, mm. so, uh, which may Minister of Special will keep him in Abuja there working uh, with the president. So it's a good thing um, okay. that we now have this situation, but I know that there are other things. That they've always complained about. So that's okay. why we have them. I think we have them in Abuja. Joining us for more discussion on this issue is the president of Original Inhabitant Development Association of Abuja, Pastor Danladi Jeji, as well as the lawyer and representative of the FCT Youth Network, Daniel Zidu. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting us to this August and a wonderful media outfit of the country. I am Pastor J.G. Danladi, the president of Original Inhabitants Development Association of FCT Oida. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We, uh, we want to ask you what, um, in your opening remarks, how will you describe the appointment of um, an original Abuja indigenous as a minister of the Federal Republic. Thank you very much for this wonderful question. It's a question that has plenty yes and no answer because yes, we are so delighted for this development because despite the fact that we are still waiting for the final approval and demonstration of rule of law leader like our excellency uh, senate uh, head of state bola ahmed tunubu who is willing to obey the law and the judgments of the courts so that the coming the residential election matters when the law finally bring the verdict let him do the same we are grateful that he has started that by doing that into FCT. The other aspect of it is that I want to congratulate the Honorable uh, Zafania Jisalo who has been given this appointment because he entered into the water law in order to face the reality because our necessary evil in original habitat issue was that every ruling government was the party of the original inhabitants because the constitution of Nigeria, section 301, states that the head of state is the governor of FCT. So all along, we were with the party that was ruling Nigeria in democracy.
So when we, our brother who calculated and saw the situation, he jumped out of that party and joined our law-abiding head of state now, then Ahmed Tunubu, and he joined his party in the process after his warning, winning the election, he now eventually awarded him by this project. Congratulations, and I want to say Bosa to Chisalo for what he has done, and more Bosa to the president who has done that, also in conformity with the law. It's a very good work on development, even though that is not our major issue, but it is a big start to address lacunas in the Nigerian constitution, because original habitat matter Pastor. is not... Let, let me just ask you this. We made an assertion last week on our program. The FCT indigents, who are those? Who are the FCT indigents? You see, the simple and short of it is that Agoda panel report submitted this issue of FCT to the late Murtala Mohammed, who described that the three major ethnic groups in Nigeria do not have any land in 8,000 square kilometers of land of the FCT, except the Baji, the Bari, Gede, Ghana, Ghana, Gwandara, Basa, Igbira, Koro. Amama, and also Nipe are in Yaba and Abaj. The, the Abudapan did not capture that. When he made that broadcast, 10 days after that, he was assassinated. And the idea was that brokers contend that uh, the Lagos will resume the commercial capital of Nigeria. Federal capital will also resume the political capital of Nigeria in his broadcast. But Harcourt and Lego, uh, Kaduna will also have the federal presence. That terrible loss and the shaking of that country at that 1976, the Ubasanjo took over the government and dust the tension by doing something very wonderful in order to quell Nigerian tension. What he did was that he has to, at that time, Nigerian currency was 10 naira. He did something. I want to show it to the media and people. He brought Murutala here as a model of showing Nigerians should come down. It is development, and it was military fiat that brought the FCT, but truly, he did his best, and this is what has happened. But after demographic study of Ubasanjo's work by inviting University of Ibadan and Kaduna and Azaria, they now find out that over 450,000 households existed and lived here even before Nigeria was amalgamated in 1914. Millennium Development Gold states also in 2008 there are 858 villages in FCT. That was clearly demonstrated by Obasanjo's administration by when he did this money, he turned back and he now brought light to Kuali to identify that truly we were here. These communities have been here to have treated FCT as if it's a state, whereas the population of the of FCT as 2006 census, as everybody knew, everybody went to his state, there were 1,405,201 people who were already a state. And then when, when Obasanjo did that, after two years, he handed over to Shagari. Shagari quickly wrote a letter and told, and told original habitant that Nigeria become our paternity. We, they, would not, they would not trust us, by the way. Therefore, what he would do is that okay, he created FCT into two. He have a federal, a federal, a federal capital city as the seat of government and the larger part to have the federal capital state where he built the state apparatus in Guagualada till today. As I talk to you, I work there. I am 64, 65 years old. I'm not a child. I work in that place. So this is the story. Um, this is primary information. I was alive when this thing happened. Those who were born in 1976, they are 70, 47 years old. They will look like an adult, but they don't know the history. I am telling you the history. I participated. I worked here. I was a assistant officer of FCT. I visited all the villages of FCT to identify who are here. To say FCT okay, is bad and there. treated us this way, it is not all right. Thank okay. you. Let me talk to the lawyer and representative of uh, FCT Youth Network, Daniel Zidu. Daniel. Yes, thank you. Yeah. We were told that we were told some that. people were compensated. 
and some weren't, were not compensated. And what is the situation right now? Thank you for having me. Uh, the reality is that uh, in 1976, when FCT was brought to Abuja here, there were original inhabitants here, and uh, the constitution of then, which was uh, decree number six of 1976, was smuggled into the 1979 constitution as section 256, which vested the entire land in the FCT into the federal government without paying compensation to the indigents. So when the 1999 constitution came, that section was made section 297 sub 2 of the 1999 constitution. And that section is still there till date. That clause vested all the land in the capital to the federal government, which is not supposed to be. When uh, FCT was brought, up to now, 80% or over 80% of the original inhabitants have not been resettled. The only people that were resettled, even not adequate, were the people at Wuse, which was the largest community then, then Kukwaba and the Metama, they were resettled at, uh, at uh, Kuba resettlement uh, village. So the people of Wuse were taken to Kuba Kaduna Expressway, they are the only people that were resettled outside of the FCT. But the remaining people were at Kubwa resettlement village. And up till now, almost 800, about 878 communities are still not resettled. Now, the problem is the allocations are still being made. The Govra government has taken over the lands. The indigenous are still there. Allocations are still being made on our lands and our communities. So, and we as indigents are still procreating. I don't know the plans the federal government has for us. If it is integration, you will see a community, for, for, for example, Jabi community here is surrounded by estates and buildings. And the indigents of that place are still giving birth to children. If the government is adopting integration, what is going to happen to the youths, the upcoming children that our people are giving birth to? Where are they going to build their houses? That apart, uh, as indigents, we are political, politically, if you look at uh, uh, our senatorial district, we have only one. Whereas the population is so large than other states that have three. Ordinarily, based on the constitution, we are supposed to have more than two House of Rep members based on the population. Abuja is more than some states in number. Why is it that we have only two House of Rep members and only one senator in the FCT? So these are some of the issues we are battling with as FCT indigents. Okay, let's go to Pastor Danleji Jeji now. Yeah. Mm. Contributions or contribution? Mm. Contribution? Yeah. Well, I, I just want to say that last week, when the United Nations was celebrating the World Indigenous Day, I was with them, I was invited. And then people came from the nine communities. And the passers-by had to park their carts. God, they were surprised that uh, so Abuja has indigenous people. They came with their masquerades. They came with their tambourine, traditional ones, their traditional dresses. More than 500 of them from different communities. And the, I think the fact of the matter is that there is no ungoverned territory in Nigeria. If you look at the name Abuja, it's an indigenous name. It was not given in 1976 by the federal government. Zuma, which is a symbol of Abuja, you know, uh, history. It's, uh, it's, a, it's an indigenous name. That means a place where fowl is found. Suleja 
was created by someone, one of the indigenous people, during, during the uprising of the jihad in about 1810. They all migrated from Southern Zaria and settled in Suleja and established that kingdom. So the fact of the matter is that the UN had described indigenous people as people with historical continuity with pre-invasion and pre-colonial societies. People that have ancestral ties to the land and their resources. These people are saying that their great-grandfathers were buried here. They have sacred groups, spiritual forests that have been taken over by the government. Why they buried their great-grandfathers? And that there is nothing you can use to even compensate what they have lost. In fact, two years ago, they wanted to organize a demonstration, millions of them, to block all entries into Abuja. Mm. Mm. It was a civil society that came to intervene okay. that they should. So we should commend them for let, being peaceful. Let me take it back to uh, Pastor Dalla Dijeji. You want to re react to what um, Wanli had just said? That's even beyond compensation. I want to thank him, Wale, who has spoken now. You see, our ancestors left four things for us. One, ethnography. Every nation in God in his creation work, Nigeria, by Standard Institute of Linguistics, Nigeria is hosting over 550 languages. FCT has over 10 languages living here. And these ethnographic have their history, have our identity, have our ethnicity. Together with our geography, which we are occupying, with the land of FCT belonging to the region habitant people and our territory. Besides, we have our own religion and then our culture. After this was before that man, Nigeria was born in 1914. After this man was born in 1914, called Nigeria, we were already here. The colonial man took over their land and became our leader for 1960. They didn't take any of our these properties. Nigeria became independent in 1960. Original inhabitant too became independent. How on earth will our head of state in 1976 declare and say that three major ethnic groups, because they don't live in federal capital territory, 8,000 square kilometers of land, the land is virgin, despite the fact that over 450,000 people live here before that 1978 census by Demographic Department of University of Ibadan. How on earth will our country do that to us? Besides, when this, what happened now is that Nigeria is not the first country to transfer a political capital from another location to any other location. Normally, civilized and workable nations will first of all have environmental impact assessment of that project. Where is the report of the environmental impact assessment of FCT matter? Therefore, what I want to submit to Nigeria is this. You see, this issue of compensation and then not paying people and so on. Compensation simply means Nigerian country did, a, because of this confusion, they brought the issue of Land Use Act. The Land Use Act vests on the land in the governance of that state and to hold it in trust for the people that is state. And then FCT owned to visit in the Federal Republic of Nigeria to hold it by the head of state who will become our governor and he give the minister. Compensation, what it really means is this. That, for example, as I am sitting here, if I want to go to Okene, I will go to Okene village, see an old man, say, please, I want to stay here with you. And he agrees. He gives me a paper or an agreement. I say, okay, let me pay 200000 for example. He will not write agreement. By, by practice of Nigerians, I will have to see the paramount leader of that security eye of that village so that he will endorse that. Truly, I am staying in that person, bona fide landed property of that person. To make me be truly person of that place, I should quickly run to the local government of that place I'm living so that I will be given what is called right of occupancy. And normally the right of occupancy is 50 years. If I enjoy staying with him, I can go further to the state of Okene, for example, and then become okay, a, the, the state okay. person. 90 years, 99 years. What it means is that after that period, Daniel, what will happen is that by 90 years, 50 years, now. I, will, I will get back the own, my own land. In the FCT case, okay. I want to submit quickly sir, that by saying, all who have our lands in R, R of O in FCT, three years remaining, if you multiply a minus, 1976 to now, by three years to come, R of O of FCT, FCT land will be over. 
Federal Republic of Nigeria, our agreement was that by 99 years, the White House and the presidential villa everywhere will be 99 years, who will renegotiate. After all, you didn't even compensate us. You didn't do anything. You don't compensate the United Nations law, Universal Declaration said, if you compensate somebody adequately, according to Section 44 of 1999 Constitution, you will have to allow the person go, and he has a right to return. You didn't recompensate us, you didn't discuss with us, and now you are not coming to say, we are not here, no, we are here. But okay, people, thank uh, you very much. Daniel, Beginning to correct this Daniel for you, we know that the, come to power. Daniel, I was told that um, some, of the, some, some of the agitation is that, apart from appointing somebody from FCT as the minister, that you guys also, we are also agitating that that minister must be in charge of FC, the FCT. Well, that one is part. What are what are the demands that you want uh, the Ashwaju administration um, to meet? What are the things that you want the administration to do for the FCT mm -hmm. indigents at this time? Network. Daniel, can you hear? Give us our second tier system, which was submitted temporarily to the National Assembly. What is remaining is a This House of Representatives that will say yes. 240 House of Representatives will say yes. Remove that if to make us state. 724 governors to agree with our cry and remove our lacunas in the Constitution. And then it will now meet our. Honorable Minister now to come to the Executive Council to correct this so that the bulletin will now assent it and make the 37 state. How on earth will you make law and give room for 37, 36 states to have a look into it? Whereas FCT people did not have any time to look into that law. Buhari signed that law, 16 laws. We didn't see it. And you want original inhabitant people to obey the law. Which kind of country is which? Please, let's correct it and do the, the needful. We are in democracy. FCT okay. came by decree. This is democracy. And we shouldn't be differentiated this way. We need three senators. Two, at, at least one senator can be in the federal capital city. And you can also make it quickly by creating original inhabitant development commission so that it can handle the confusion that my, 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 my colleague here already mentioned. Okay. I think we have to thank leave it there. Much. I want to thank you, Pastor Danladi Jeji. Um, as well as uh, the lawyer representing FCT Youth and Network, Daniel City. Thank you for your intervention. This is um, well. This is Chris, this is clear. Well, it's, it's so clear. And uh, you know what they said something last week when I met them that for the first time since the next six, Ashwaju came out to be they did the best thing for them that they've ever seen before. Anytime they are doing seller, nobody re remembers them. Ashwaju, this last seller, attended to all the nine kingdoms. And they told me they were so excited. And for the first time, a minister from Abuja, you know, is, has been appointed. So I think we are making progress. Mm. Mm. You know, gradually, we, we address that injustice. It has mm. been no, for you, so many years. You can't blame them if you said you are going to compensate people and only a fraction of the people who are compensated. It's not, it's not good enough. Mm. What they are complaining about now is not the recent governments in our country that caused it. This has been something that's... Something that happened uh, uh, more than 40 years years. Yeah. So, but I think that with time, some of these injustices will be addressed. Mm. And um, they just need to be patient and work with the government of the day. I'm sure there will be some concessions still that will be made to them. You know? uh, it's, it's good that they are coming out with their complaints because yeah. nah. if you don't... Uh, they say don't talk. Fortune favors the daring. Mm. If you keep quiet, you will not get anything. If they didn't go to court, for example, maybe they won't have a minister of mm. uh, Abuja extraction mm. today. 2018 so, judgments. Um, mm. uh, we look forward to um, good things uh, happening to these indigenous people. And the progress of FCT, the progress of our country. All right. I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your contribution. Today. Thank you. And um, the Mestro, Bajide Koladi, thank you for another wonderful production. I want to thank you, the, the indigenous of um, Abuja that actually attended uh, your contribution. That's uh, Pastor Danledi Jeji and Daniel Zidi. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for the regular episode of Journalist Angers by 5 p.m. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight by 11.30 p.m. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. 
I'm Ayodini Uzuahu. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. TV. All the goals, all the clashes, all the moments. All of Rashford, Salah, and Saka. Start is going all better. in the language of your choice. All in HD. Available on all these bouquets to choose from. To watch on all these devices. Stay connected for all the action. Get DSTV with an HD decoder. Plus dish, plus one month confirmed for 18,500 Naira. It Every major news story is with many perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did this? At 4.30 p.m. At Tivasa News, wherever the big news story is happening,